This is part 15 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is MVC and how MVC works. So first, what is MVC? MVC consists of three fundamental parts, model, view and the controller. It's an architectural design pattern for implementing the user interface layer of an application. A typical real-world application usually has the following layers. User interface layer, business logic layer. This layer is also commonly called as the domain layer and then the data access layer. MVC design pattern is used for implementing the user interface layer of the application. Now let's understand how MVC works with an example. Let's say we want to retrieve a specific employee details that is an employee whose ID is 1 and then display those details on a web page in an HTML table as you can see right here. So from our favorite browser, we issue a request and the URL may look something like the following. Notice we have presumetech.com which is our domain and then we have slash employee slash details because we want to retrieve employee details and then finally a value of 1 which in this case is the ID of the employee. When this request arrives at our server, it is the controller in the MVC design pattern that receives this request and handles it. The controller creates the model and the model has the classes that describe the data. In addition to the data itself, model also contains the logic to retrieve data from the underlying data source such as a database. In addition to creating the model, the controller also selects a view and then passes the model object to that view. It is this view that contains the logic to generate the required HTML to present the model data that is the employee model data provided to the view by the controller. This HTML is then sent over the network to the user who made that request. Now keeping this example in mind, let's understand what makes up our model, view and the controller. We want to retrieve employee details and display them in an HTML table. So model in this case consists of two classes, the employee class and the employee repository class. Employee class represents the data that we want to display. In our case, we want to display ID name and department. And notice the employee class has those three properties. The employee repository class manages the employee data. It is this class that knows how to save and retrieve employee data from the underlying data source such as a database. So to generalize this, we can say a model in MVC contains set of classes that represent the data and the logic to manage that data. In our case, the employee class represents the employee data that we want to display and the employee repository class manages the employee data. That is, it knows how to save and retrieve employee data from the underlying data source such as a database. So as far as this example is concerned, the model is made up of these two classes, employee and employee repository. Now, if you're wondering, why are we using the interface iEmployee repository? Can't we use just the employee repository class without the interface? Well, we can, but using the interface abstraction allows us to use dependency injection, which in turn allows us to create systems that are loosely coupled and easily testable. We'll discuss dependency injection in detail in our upcoming videos. Now, let's understand the role of a view. A view in MVC should only contain the logic to display the model data provided to it by the controller. You can think of a view as an HTML template. In our case, we want the view to present the employee data in an HTML table like this. Remember, the model object has the employee data, but the model doesn't know anything about how to present this data. It is the responsibility of the view, so this model object is provided to the view by the controller. Notice the code in this view. It is sprinkling the employee data such as ID, name and department in the respective TD elements. So the view in this case is provided with the employee object. The employee object is the model that carries the employee data to this view. The only responsibility of this view is to present the employee data in an HTML table which is exactly what this view is doing right now. In MVC, a view is only responsible for presenting the model data. There should be no complex logic in a view. 
To maintain a clear separation of concerns, the logic in a view must be very minimal and that too, it must only be there for presenting the data. If you get to a point where the presentation logic in the view is getting too complicated, consider using a view model or a view component. View components are new in this version of MVC. We'll discuss view components in detail in our upcoming videos. Now, let's turn our attention to the controller. When a request from the browser arrives at our application, it is the controller in the MVC design pattern that handles the incoming HTTP request and responds to the user action. In this case, the user has issued a request to slash employee slash details slash one. So this incoming URL is mapped to the details action method in the employee controller, passing it the ID of the employee, which in this case is one. This mapping is done by routing rules defined in our application. We'll discuss routing in detail in our upcoming videos. As you can see from the code in this details action method, the controller builds the model. In this case, the model is the employee object. To retrieve the employee data from the underlying data source, the controller is making use of the employee repository class. Once the controller has constructed the employee model object with the required data, it then passes that employee model object to the view. The view then generates the required HTML to present the employee data provided to it by the controller. This HTML is then sent over the network to the user who made that request. If this is confusing at the moment, please don't worry. We'll bring all this to life by implementing models, views and controllers for our application as we progress through this course. And at that point, it'll be much clearer. So to summarize, here are the key takeaway points. MVC is an architectural design pattern for implementing user interface layer of an application. Model is the set of classes that represent data and the logic to manage that data. View contains the display logic to present the model data provided to it by the controller. Controller handles the HTTP request, work with the model and selects a view to render that model. As you can see, in the MVC design pattern, we have a clear separation of concerns. That is, each component has a very specific task to do. In our next video, we'll discuss setting up the MVC middleware in our ASP.NET Core application. Thank you for watching.